You tell me if I'm not blocking a fire exit, I'm not blocking a fire exit. This is the Wacom Cintiq 16, and this is the Wacom Intuos 3. Why am I comparing two tablets? They have a 14.4, we'll just say 14 years of life in between them. Look at all these nice notes. Let's remove these notes. Because of the way this thing was made, to be uh, left and right-handed, I would always accidentally hit that little uh, zoom strip there, and that was kind of annoying, so I just started taping my notes over it. Yeah, look at that pitting. Look at this use. This thing got some use. Oh, certainly. I've had this Cintiq 16 for about six months now. Before that, I was using this Intuos 3 for about three years. So how far have we come in drawing tablet technology? Is it worth the upgrade? Yes, but it's not as different as you would think it would be. So brace yourself for a bunch of specs. Get your hard hats on, put your notebooks out. We're gonna go do this. Intuos 3, it was $330 when new, which in today's dollars is like $1,000. He said lovingly. It's the 10 inch model. It's a four by three aspect ratio at eight by six inches. It was released in September 2004, which is three years older than I thought it was. I don't know if you really care, but I was like, whoa, this is like three years older than I thought it was. I thought it was from 2007. End of story. It also works in Catalina even though Apple cut 32-bit support. And then one more spec, it has 1,024 levels of sensitivity compared to the Cintiq 16, which has 8,192 levels of sensitivity. Can you tell the difference? It's nothing I really noticed when I was using this, and some of it might have to do with this 2015 MacBook Air, but there is a little bit of lag when I'm drawing, and I think the actual pressure sensitivity of going from here, pressing hard to light, it's mildly noticeable. Cintiq 16, as the name suggests, it's 16 inches. It's a 16 by nine aspect ratio with 13 by eight inches, which is bigger than the Intuos 3. It was released in January 2019 for $650, which is like twice as much, but this has got a screen on it. And we're going to the part about the screen. The color space is 72% of NTSC and 96% of sRGB. So it's basically an sRGB display. So if you want to preview how your work looks in the lowest threshold of viewable acceptability, well, here you go. iMac screen versus Cintiq screen. Which one's brighter? Yeah, it's dim. Brightness stands out more than color accuracy. If colors are a little off, I may not notice it, but it's more about doing constructing, doing line work, and doing coloring when you've already established what the colors are. Easy enough with display toggle to pop it up there and, and just work up there and do color, and then you know what your colors are because you get your color palette. So it's not really an issue. I don't, I'm not really affected by it that much um, because if you want to enter the land of diminishing returns, there's a 22 inch model for $12,000 and it comes with an adjustable stand, but it's the same display. There's also the Pro 16 inch, so same size, but this one's the Pro no. for $15,000. Same size, $15,000. It's 4K, whereas this is 1080. Better color space with about 90% of Adobe RGB. I always refer to it as NITS. This, this unit of measurement, CD slash M2. Not 100% sure what it means, but from what I've read very briefly without doing any research beyond that, it's the same thing as a knit. Am I ignorant? Probably. Probably I'm wrong, but whatever. I'm just reading. I'm gonna just read it. So this Cintiq 16 is 210 CD slash M2, whatever, 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 brightness. The Pro is 250 of that units of brightness, and the iMac is 500. So. Even with the Pro, even with the, the $1,500 Pro model 16, you're still half as bright as the iMac. For me, it's a land of diminishing returns. If I'm going from 14 years ago 
to now, this is pretty good by comparison. I'm just glad to have a screen. There's other models. There's the Wacom One, which is the only one I really considered because it's $400. It's slightly newer, but its display is a little less bright. 200 CD slash M2, whatever. Nits, 200 nits. I'm just call them nits. Like if you're going on the go, Wacom One is probably better. To save money, it's got an older AHVA display. However, that affects whatever. Both like the same color range. It's got more simplified hookups in the back. So this model uses HDMI to act as a second monitor and it uses USB-A for data transfer. And if you're a Mac user and you're not using a Mac mini or a Mac Pro with a graphics card, there's an HDMI port. Then you need one of these like, I don't know, what was this like? $25? Maybe it was less, maybe it was 10. Maybe it was 15, maybe it was $19. I remember it was a long time ago. But I have a lot of pluggy things. I already have another one of these right here that's already filled up. I got this one filled up and I got all my ports here filled up. So this is going to USB-C to this. This HDMI is converting here. It's also got, thanks for SD cards. It's got the XDSC, whatever, whatever GoPros use and your standard SD card, whatever they're called. So it's good to have a little thing that takes these cards anyways, because you never know, your GoPro can get smashed and how are you going to get that footage off of there? Your Smash GoPro, you're going to plug that Smash GoPro in your computer You pop out the card you're going to put in here, so that's good. Okay, back to the Intuos. And then this fancy nib holder, as fancy as it is, is never one to use nib holders. You just throw them on the table and that's that. I suppose it's very of the times to have this sort of thing that is this contemporary representation of how you put an old-timey pen. It's always there, you always see where it is, but, you know, not really... That's something you really want to travel with. This is the thing you can clip on either side of this. Slides it in like that. I don't use it. I don't keep it connected. I Apparently I couldn't even be bothered to plug it into there. If I were to bring it somewhere, I would be inclined to do it because it's no fun throwing a random pen in a bag and just having to fish around for it. So more useful in a travel situation, but in an everyday situation, am I going to holster my pen? No. No, I'm not. I'm not holstering my pen. I don't have time to holster my pen. I just put my pen on the table and sometimes it rolls behind and I gotta fish around for it. That's the way. That's the way it goes. Magnets. Maybe magnets would be convenient. Magnets. Between the two. Not cross-useful, even though the technology that makes these run without batteries is magical. It's not magical enough where you can use a <laughs> nib from an old, at least an Intuos 3 on a Cintiq 16. Technically it's a pen, technically this is a nib. This is a nib, this is a very worn down nib. This is a pen. So every time I said the word nib, replace it with the word pen. Oh. And I think the nibs are in here. You would have thought that there'd be extra nibs in here, but they're not. These, this one didn't come with extra nibs. So these two pens, if you compare the size of these two pens, Cintiq pen is a little smaller, feels about the same. Buttons are about the same placement. In an ideal world, I, you know, I got meat hooks and mm. I, I dislike having this button so low, I would rather have to go out of my way to hit it, but that's just my preference. I map button 2 to nothing, and I map button 3 to display toggle. So I am always display toggling between the two. This mouse uh, that came with it is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 button mouse. This is a 5 button mouse. I mean, it's it's not bad as a mouse. The, the only problem is it only works in this area. So you're kind of limited, but in cramped situations, if you don't have space for your mouse, you could use this. This has way extra bezel. Wait, bezels? You know, all this extra bezel space, enough to have all these buttons. And for me, I used it a lot, and I would also use it in combination with the keyboard. And I used to have it sort of like this, and the keyboard was on top of it. There's like a $99, I don't know, they call them productivity add-ons or something, this remote. It does what all this would have done, which I've said it before, the Magic Trackpad takes the place of the whole ability to quickly zoom, which is a very important thing when you're drawing, to be able to quickly zoom. A lot of times I'll have my hand here and here and ready, and I'll constantly be doing the whole Magic Trackpad thing. I think it's uh, very native to just use your left hand with it. It's really easy. Go for it. Keep your mice on this side. Said it before, say it again. I'm done saying it. Oh. 14 years later, this still runs on Mac OS Mojave. And it also runs in Catalina. Side note, when you install Cintiq 16 drivers, it overwrites the drivers for this and this doesn't work. The whole point is 2004. 2004 thing. 2004 thing, we're on a thing. 
2019. But even with the Catalina dropping support for 32-bit apps, it still works through the magic of whatever makes it work. But it definitely is not as reliable. Basically, when the drivers crash, you would use it and it would totally stop working. You go to system preferences, you get the screen where it would reset it. And it's just like if I were to plug this in now. Why not? Let's plug it in now. You can still click, you can still right click, but see how that far that pulls? Ordinarily, when you would tap here, it would bring the mouse up to the corner like that. Um, but you can see by comparison, it is <laughs> way, this full surface area is way less and it's working more like a mouse. So if I go like this, it drags like a mouse and it drags really slow. So in terms of transitioning from a screenless drawing tablet to one with the screen, is there any kind of brand conversion that needs to happen? Not really, because you could use this as a screenless. And if you know how to draw, you're kind of already naturally inclined to be able to draw. The real learning comes from drawing without a screen. Learning this is hard, but once you learn it, it becomes a natural thing. It's very weird to draw and to like look at the thing not where you're drawing it. But once you learn it, it's good. So transition wise, there's nothing to it. And once I map display toggle to this button here, I never went back. I'm jumping back and forth all the time. The thing I underestimated that I like so much about it is that this works great as a second monitor. So if I'm doing a thumbs up here and I want to look at notes here, I want to look at reference down here. It's great. Even if I'm not drawn, I'm using it all the time. It makes me want a third monitor. If I'm doing video and stuff like that, I'm not always drawing but this is definitely getting full-time use as a second monitor. That is the dream. Workflows are very complicated and there's always room for more monitors. So the obvious pros of this, being able to see what you're drawing on the screen is obviously way better than not. If I want to be able to trace something, I can very easily go over it like this and it's not the same as if I were to throw it up here. It's a little more deliberate. I'm being a little slower. I'm being a little more careful. I might be inclined to turn up smoothing. But having two monitors is better than one. Yes. Having three monitors is even better and no more crashing drivers, which is kind of be expected with really old software. This will occasionally have a thing where you'll be doing it and it just won't respond. The only thing you have to do there is just move the mouse a little and then whatever happens. So there is that little bugginess. As for the Intuos 3, well, I wouldn't go out and buy one, but it would get the job done if I needed it. There's nothing about it that doesn't really work for me as a screenless tablet, but there are plenty of new screenless tablets that are probably a little better, a little more future-proof. But really what it comes down to is you probably want a screenless tablet because they're maybe smaller, maybe you want a smaller tablet, and they're usually cheaper. If you aren't doing animation all the time, if you're doing more basic things, if you're an illustrator and maybe you just prefer it, maybe you travel a lot, maybe you have a preference for a screenless tablet, then you would get a screenless tablet. Not this screenless tablet, as good as it is. So why am I making a video about drawing tablets that were at least 14 years apart from each other? Why do I do a lot of the things that I do? Every product I've been getting lately questions whether or not I'm happy. Also, is it Wacom or Wacom? Or Wacom.